Good morning, church. I'd like to welcome everyone out this morning to our Sabbath school. And before we do anything else, I'd just like to invite us all into a moment of prayer. All kind Father in heaven, we indeed thankful to you for the week we had. We are thankful for the challenges we had as well. We ask, dear Father, that as we study, that you may open our minds and our understanding so that we will learn the truth you have for us. Help that we would have personal and corporate application of what we learn and that we will seek to improve and to depend on you. Let us ask you, dear Father, to open our minds to the deficiencies that may be present in our lives so that you can be the one who would enhance them. And let us not reach to the point wherein there is no more grace for us. Help that we would avail ourselves under the influence of the Holy Spirit to serve you so that we all will have the opportunity to be saved, to be welcomed home by you. We seek your forgiveness for the sins we may have committed and we ask a blessing on us all. Those who are following us online, we ask a special blessing on them. And for everyone who made it out, a special blessing as well. Be it those who may not be feeling very well today, for whatever reason, God, bring comfort and healing to their souls. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we'll be looking at the seventh lesson of the quarter. Just in case we do not, we're not quite sure where we are going in terms of the, the lessons, I just want to remind you where we come from. Because for the whole quarter, the subject is looking at the dimensions of God's love. For the first four weeks, we looked at the height and depth. We looked at the breadth and the length. Two weeks ago, we looked at resting in Christ. That's a dimension also. Last week, we looked at Christ bridging the gap. So, between, it's not a gap, you know, it's a gulf. That's what we studied last week. So, last week, Christ was, one dimension was, he was a bridge, to bridge the gap. This week, we are looking at an anchor. So, it's not just an anchor, he is the anchor. So, we're looking at one dimension another dimension. What do I mean by dimension? You see, if you have one dot, it's not a dimension, but when you link the two things, then you get a dimension. And it gives us like a line. I want us to, if you put two dimensions, you're going to get an area. I know we have a lot to see. If you take me to the area, I'm going to pull you back to the line because we're looking at one dimension, Christ being the anchor and how we can link up with him because as the last part of the lesson say, he's the guarantee. But our salvation is guaranteed only if we keep our side of the bargain. Are we clear on that? So we have to do our part and that's what we want to do today. So, Jesus, the anchor of our soul. But uh, we're going to, we're talking about anchor. What is, what do we mean by anchor? If we should just observe ships, they all carry an anchor. They all carry different sizes of anchors that are relevant to the weight of the ship, to the size of the ship, and those anchors guarantee the stability of that ship. 
when a ship is being docked, the anchors must be let down and then they pull the anchor to ensure that it is holding on something. So it's, it's, the, it's what keeps the stability of the ship. It's what protects the cargo. It's what actually protects the, the crew of the ship. In today's world, we know that there are lots of disturbances around us. We know that we are pulled here, we are pulled there, we are pulled every way possible. And we need that anchor. We need that rock. We need Jesus. He is the anchor of our soul. Without him, we would not know where we are. We would not know what to do. But with Christ being the anchor, he is the anchor of our souls. So therefore, we have got to be in Christ. We have got to be receptive to what Christ is offering us. We have got to yield our free will to him. And yielding our free wills to God is a challenge at times. But we have got to overcome those challenges. The lesson talks about the challenges that we would experience. But uh, we need to be in Christ. And uh, having that anchor is going to cause us to be in him. Okay. A little later, Brother Aaron is going to tell us some of the challenges. Because he will deal mainly with the warnings. This lesson is about warning and admonition or encouragement so he's going to elaborate on those later because it's rough out there <laughs> and if you don't have that anchor you will be swept away in the storm of life okay how can we connect that to the soul what is soul because if you don't know what it is you can't connect properly because it's we who have to connect with the soul. Well, maybe I can speed up by giving you my understanding of soul. You know, so very often, whenever we say soul, folks tell me, well, the soul that sin it shall die. Well, I don't want my soul when I die. I want it now. So it will be able to connect with the Savior. The soul, to me, the definition I want to use for soul here, because it has many meanings. Soul has many meanings. I am focusing on one. The, f the soul is used interchangeably with the mind. And the mind ha has got three faculties. One, thinking. Two, feeling. And three, willing. In other words, willing, that's why you make choice, whether you serve Christ or not. And whether you stay with him. So all along we're making, so that soul, we need that soul. The soul is us, in us. So that we can make a decision so that our will will be in alignment with God's will. And if we succeed in doing that, we will be safe. So, how you think? How you feel? The sort of um, to think like Jesus, to feel like Jesus, we need to have the mind of Jesus. So this is where the connection. What the writer says, look, while they were talking about the priesthood of Jesus there was an interruption that's what the lesson said didn't it he interrupted the theological story about the priesthood and he came straight on to salvation that line I told you of 
it's a line when you, as a sinner, what salvation does, it brings you into an adoption. So the adoption and the anchor meet, and between them, there is salvation. When you are Christ, you accept Christ. I'm not even seeing you like a sinner, but as a saint. And if we can maintain that position, I am saying we'll be safe in the hands of God. Brother Essen? Would have Jesus. That's what I come to say something about the priesthood of Jesus. Hey, Brother Essen, Brother Essen, stop. Let me stop you a minute. Pardon me? Let me just stop you here. Last week we looked at the priesthood of Jesus. Re Re Brother Essen, please listen to me for a moment. Last week, the memory text, the last word it uses is Melchizedek. We studied that last week. That's the priesthood, and that's where we looked at Christ being the bridge between us. This week we're looking at him as an anchor, not as a priest. No, I'm saying, well, we're not talking about that, Brother Essen. We no, we want to talk about the anchor. Brother Essen, we talked about that last week. I'm saying, today we're looking at the anchor, not the priest. He has different roles. And if we are to continue and finish our lesson, I am saying we cannot afford to deviate because last week we look at the priesthood. No, 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 Brother Essen, no. Yes, please. But no, don't get, I am saying, Brother Essen, we're not talking about the priesthood today. So you have to be in line with what I'm saying, Brother Essen, and with the lesson. Let, Brother Essen, speak, please. Ready for me? Yes, we are ready what for I'm you, about Essen. Essen. Um, The priesthood of Jesus and the priesthood of, 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 of the men in the time. Now, in the temple on earth, there was a, there was a, there was a, a, a curtain. Is the temple in, 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 um, in heaven where Jesus in the have a, have a, have a, have a, um, a veil? Is there a veil in the temple in heaven? That's what I want to come up with. It's what I'm in the book I talk about. There's a veil in the temple on earth. Is there a veil in the temple in heaven? Yes or no? You should do the memory verse, talk about the veil. The memory verse, talk about the veil. Because that's what I'm talking about. Is there a veil in the temple? Anybody answer? That's right. That's right. There is a veil. Well, what is the veil? What is the veil? The flesh, the back of Christ is the veil. I did write it in my book, but in my Bible. Let me get to show you. Just as the veil that rent in the temple, there's a veil also. In the temple in heaven, but not cloth, not um, cloth. It's a veil in the back of Christ. It's called a veil. It's just what I want because the memory verse talk about the veil. And as you said about the veil, that's what I, I'm not talking about last week's lesson. We talked about last week's lesson already. Thank you, Brother Essen. Thank you. So, with, with regard. With regard to the, to the anchor, Sunday lesson tells us how we can connect to the anchor. How can we connect to the anchor? One vital... Wait, brother. Brother Snell? Are you speaking to, to that particular topic on the anchor? Well, I haven't opened it up yet, so... Can you let me please open it up so you can come on after? The con you see, if we don't follow the lesson, we'll never finish. I am saying we're looking at how we can connect with the anchor. Well, if I don't say yet, please let me say how we can connect with the anchor because 
something that is so vital to connect. Pardon? Yeah. Is that the point you're making? Is that the point you're making? Okay. Brother Snag, I know you're from the Grenadines and I know you're accustomed with ships and sailing, so therefore I am fully aware that you know. So please let him speak. Speak, Brother Snag. The answer, it does old, but when they get those certain them in the sea, it does not old, it's dry. It's dry now. Speak to the mic. Speak to the mic, brother. It, it drag underneath. When you come to a place like Kikamji, and you meet it, the anchor doesn't grow. It's too deep. It just skip over there. This is why most of the water is rough. You get nothing. When you come to a you just hear some little thing. But when you go not up to Antigua and other places, we call it... Speak to the mic, yes, please. We call it Dutchman, Dutchman Head. If you could cross there, before the wind gets there, it doesn't get no, um, no, what you call it, an anchor, right? The anchor, own, and when it's old, sometimes it's passing, and you can't get it out because it gets in a rock down the sea. You can't get out, so the anchor is very important, especially when a hurricane. I sailed through three hurricanes already, and that is what you get. So if you slip with the anchor, you have a problem. I could remember once to know the Dominica. We get a um, hurricane day and was praying. And not nothing because the anchor can't touch. It's too deep. So what we do, we just stay there. But as I said, the anchor is very, very important. When it gets shallow water and hurricane, it doesn't hold. The, the ship comes ashore and it's sticking the um, it comes ashore and stick in the rock. And, and then I could remember my uncle Job. Okay, brother Snag. We yeah. we, we have to Make it narrow. Yes. I, I, could, I could remember my uncle Job. He was a good diver. And he dived two days to get our anchor release. So it's not something easy. So we all need to hold on the anchor. Right? And it will help us. Amen. Thank you, Brother Snag. Thank you. So we want to switch over from the physical. This anchor we're talking about, there is something more beautiful. We're talking about Christ. We move, want to move from the physical anchor of the ship to the spiritual aspect. How can we connect to that spiritual, to Christ? And one of the things that is key is that of grace. And look how we connect. God's hands of grace comes down and our hands of faith goes up and they meet, okay? So there is a part that you have got to play. You can't say, well, Christ died for me and it's okay. No, you have to make an effort to connect with him. Right? And from that we have, so grace, the hands of grace coming down and the hand of faith going up. And from that, we have an adoption. We become adapted now. That's when the adoption takes place with the, with the Savior. Now, if I may say something here. Uh, Paul warns against certain pitfalls along the road. And... Using the concept of sailing and anchorage, a good captain knows where to sail. And he tries to avoid using his anchor. So he wants the ship to sail in safe water. Because it is true that Christ is the anchor of our soul, and we must be in Christ always. And so once we are in Christ always, that is sailing in good waters. As much as I say that, Paul warns against the slippery slope or the dangerous waters of self-pity and faithlessness. 
And uh, Brother McQueen talks about faith. Because without faith, it is possible to please God. Impossible. Did you say what? Impossible. It is impossible to please God without faith. So we must have faith and we must be careful not to have self-pity. Sometimes we are doing things in church. And I, I just want to bring this home with some relevance. What causes us to be disappointed? And it talks about disappointed and discouragement here. When trials uh, would cause us to have a fall in a way. What could discourage us as church members in this church? What are some of the things that could discourage us? Because we need to pay attention to them. So that we can see them coming as rocks in the sea of life. So that we can sail either around them or avoid them. We study this lesson. We need to know what our challenges are. So what are some of the challenges we may have to experience while being members of Wilsden Church? No comments. So we don't have any challenges. <laughs> Wonderful. I think we're in heaven. Early this week, or last week, I managed to catch up with a couple of friends who I hadn't seen for years, years upon years. And I thought they were settled into the church because uh, when I knew them, we, we did a lot of things together. We gathered together. In fact, one of them was a top in gatherer. And... Uh, over the years that we we in Sabbath school, we we did so many things together. We had lunch together and all of these things, and only to find that they're now no longer coming to church. And one of them, I spoke to her um, a couple of nights ago, only to find that she's saying that um, she listened into other organisations and that the Seventh Day and they teach better than the Seventh Day Adventists pastors and so on. So it's very sad to see how people who want, and this is what Paul's talking about, one of the aspects of, of uh, you know, people. A where, falling away. A falling away. That's right. Where, where it says in, in is it chapter 6, that we had feasted, we'd, we'd watered, we'd brought fruits, we'd, we'd done everything, you know, and yet we'd fallen away. And I think it's, uh, and I think Brother Essen, respect to Brother Essen, who brought this up a few weeks ago and said, you know, we might be, we ought to be mindful of how the church is changing through COVID. And we have to be mindful because when we, what we're seeing is that people, yes, people may be home watching, t watching on Zoom, but not, that may not be the case. And we have to be mindful that we, while we spend time talking about the mark of the beast, and while we spend time talking about what the government is doing, we, something's happening right in front of our, our eyes and we don't recognize it, a falling away. That's right. Uh, if, if I may add or draw from what you said, I would like to ask a question, not necessary to get, not necessarily to get the answer, but uh, we have close to 400 shares in this church. In this hall, we have about 50%. Now, every chair that's unoccupied is a soul that isn't in our church. Is that symbolic of a fall in a way? And if that is symbolic of a fall in a way, what is our plan? In other words, let us make it real. Paul isn't only talking to people who existed hundreds of years ago. He's speaking to us right now, right here at Willsden. We, it's true that COVID has taken a lot of us out of church and some to the great beyond. But the truth is we have seats thrown in the attic. And we have chairs that are not being used. And individuals have spent hard cash purchasing them. 
individuals have spent mortgage their properties to cover the repairs and improvement of this building. What are we doing presently that is leading or contributing to that falling away? What are we doing to encourage and enhance members to return? I made the remark sometime that you, when you look at the audience here, and Paul was speaking to an audience well, isn't that true? You, you wonder where the youths are and the children are. Look around. Look around. We are a retirement church. Where is the middle? Is it true that, okay, I see the elder is coming, and yes. I think um, perhaps maybe not uh, wanting to dwell too much on that. Because and that's true. I because agree. what happens, what happens the, um, during, the, um, during the pandemic, the, um, the church um, engaged well, the church secure um, a Zoom platform for the children. And the children have been having a children church every Sabbath um, on Zoom, just like the adults were having. The adults have returned in part, but the children still continue. So even now, the children are having their program. So they are not here presently, but they are having their program. Um, so it's not that they have fallen away. Um, whilst the children are having their program, the parents of the children have to be at home with them because they cannot leave them. So there are a number of reasons. Um, so maybe we do not need to go down that line. But what I would like to say here is that um, as a people, relating to the lesson as a people, we need to ensure that our focus is on God. We need to keep our eyes on Jesus. Um, it, is quite, it is quite true that um, there are many who, who would use COVID as, as a, a scapegoat. Yes. Um, and what I have said in the past is that, is that coming together is of vital importance because coming together we strengthen one another and it was jesus himself who said fail not to assemble yourself together on the sabbath and the sabbath is a day of holy convocation it is a must that we should come if we do not then we will be like a firewood that is taken out of the fire Go and cold. very soon uh, it will go out. The fire will go out. So um, our eyes must be on Jesus. Um, mustn't be on um, charisma, because if we have a, char a charismatic leader um, and our focus is on this leader, when that leader leaves, uh, um, then we might leave too. But we need to ensure that our focus is on Jesus. And whatever happened, however it happened, we need to know that Jesus is able. Thank you for that contribution, Elder. So Paul, Paul have, spoke of, he gave warnings. Yes, sister. Okay. Good morning, Sabbath School. Um, as I study the lesson, I look at self, my own personal self. Where do I stand in the presence of God? Amen. Is he really my anchor? What do I personally need to do to make Christ my anchor? So when I really, really study the lesson and from the platform this morning, we are talking about self here. Put away self and allow God the anchor to be in our lives. And so when we make him our anchor, then we will not fall away from him because we'll be studying his word, we'll be meditating on his word, and we will be drawing closer to him, knowing that he is the one that we can be steadfast, unmovable, because he is our anchor. Amen. Amen. So let me, uh, let me, sorry, quick word, Brother McQueen. Um, I think we, we actually missed the trick during COVID because um, 
Keith says, Elder Keith says that we, the young people, are doing their thing, but we haven't got the young, we haven't got the, the young people. The 16 to 30 year olds, where are they? They're not in here, they're not in the back. So where are they? They need to be catered for, all right? So and we missed the trick during COVID. During COVID, apparently, the, the people who got ill were the over 50s. Yeah, over 50s and 60s. So what we should have done was had the young people starting to run services here. That's what we should have done, but we didn't. So we missed the trick. Thank you very much. Folks, I want us to be positive. The Apostle Paul gave certain warnings, but he also gave encouragement. One way to, a few ways to stay firm in that anchor is to have a strong faith. And faith comes by hearing. Amen. And hearing by the word of God. That will make us stronger. Amen. Secondly, we have to grow. If a tree doesn't grow, it will stagnate. It cannot be a fruit. If it's a car and you put it on a hill and you do not use it, the handbrakes, it's going to come back. But if that tree grows and bear fruit, those are some of the positive things I am saying. You see the bell gone. I was trying to keep some order. I am saying, look, lower down. The Bible talk about how we can love by sharing with one another. But maybe we won't even get there. Because to keep order is not easy and it's not a very popular thing. Uh, Sister Ruth so, has a point that you need to make. Yes, Sister Ruth. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. And uh, I see we've been dwelling on anchor for such a while, and we haven't moved on. Now, what I'll just say here from the afternoon Sabbath, here Paul is telling us the apostle, he's concerned that his readers and hearers may have had their spiritual senses dulled because of the difficult situation they have or were facing or we are facing right now. And thus they had stopped growing in their understanding and experience of the gospel. Is not this a challenge to us all as it was before? Yes, it is. Getting discouraged because of trials. We, during COVID, we went through all these trials with different circumstances. People could not come out. And right now, some of them are fearful to come out, and we should, have the, we should not have that spirit of fear that has come out, and discouraged because of trials, and that's falling away. So that's why, for a while, you don't attend church. You know, through different trials and circumstances, you find yourself falling back. Thank you. Amen. I hear the first bell gone about two minutes ago. Let me just share two other things that we can do. While we are waiting, we must have patience to hold on to that anchor we're talking about. We have to have patience and we have to persevere to the very end. I don't want us to spend time talking about what we do not do. I want us to focus on what we can do and to help one another. Because whatever happened, the Apostle Paul gave the warning. He said, he talked about apostasy. In other words, grace lifts you to a certain height. And if you do not hold on to him, you're going to fall. We don't want any of us here to fall. So the encouragement is that we have the faith, have love so we can share with one another. Those are the key to holding on to that anchor. Faith, the grace of God, his love and our love. Faith, yes, say faith, patience and perseverance. If we have those, we will be saved. So I hear the second bell. I just want to round up by saying, that we have, we have an anchor who is Christ. 
He's also our advocate. Let us have confidence in him and in one another because we are our brother's keeper. We are joined to him by adoption. Let us not seek to divorce him, right? In America, they have a law that says a child can divorce his parents. Thank God he's not here, right? And this is where Paul warned against apostasy. Is to say, stay safe in the hands of the one who adopt you. You are no longer the same. Your behavior is changed. The old path, you walk into a new path. Abandon the old and accept the new. Knowing that he is our guarantee in spite of all the storms and tumults that are happening. There is that guarantee. Our salvation is guaranteed only. His salvation is guaranteed, but ours is guaranteed only if we stay firm in his hands. That's why the apostle Paul gave the warning. It's possible that you can be saved and get lost. We've been talking about people apostatize. So my admonition is to find out more and more how we can stay safe in the hands of God and stay there. Thank you. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the time we have spent looking at your words and the part the anchor plays in our life. Lord, may you continue to enlighten us so that as we are connected with you, Lord, we will find the ways and means of how we can stay connected and that while we are waiting, Apostasy will not be our experience. So Lord, may you continue to give us the, the faith. And may the grace keep us bound to you. Help us to be patient. Help us to be faithful. And may we perceive, persevere until you come. Amen.